humans, I'm Mr. King. Hello, pretty and handsome. Okay, now we are going to this 2021 Fabric March Paper. Okay, paper 4 as standard paper. Alright, okay, now let's go into question 1. See, given with the tables of these particles, see, first, which one is an anion? First, what is anion? Can remember, anions, they are negative ions. Negative ions that have more electrons compared to proton. Alright, so which one with more electrons? So from here, you know that it is E, 18 electrons to 16 proton. E. And okay, which one are cations? So what are cations? Okay, remember, okay? Uh, cations, they are positive ions. So how do you remember this? You see, cat, C-A-T, cat. Cat, it is also called pussycat. Positive. So all cat ions positive means they are all positive. Right, so this is how remember cat ions. So which one are cat ions? Right, so positive ions means they have more proton compared to Electrons. So which one is more proton? A and what else? I. So answer A and I. So next, normal gas atoms. So what are normal gas? Okay, normal gas they are all from group A. Yeah, which means they have stable electron arrangement. Okay, the outermost shell it has the maximum numbers of electrons. So what you can do is, so first, can look for the electronic structures, you see, one proton, one. Six means two, four. Two, four, ten. Two, eight, sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Two, eight, eight, one. And two, eight, eight, two. So, which two are normal gas? Okay, with the maximum numbers of valence electrons. And so, D and G. So from here, they are D and G. Halogen, okay, all has a halogen, they are from group 7. Group 7 means they have 7 valence electrons. So which one? 7 valence electrons. So answer is F. Group 1 means they have only one valence electrons. So one valence, so answer is H. So next, which one have the same nucleon number? Okay, nucleon number means the sum of proton and neutron. So, so which two that have the same uh, same nucleon number? So it is G and I. The total is 40. G and I. Next, which one causes acidity in aqueous solution? So acid is due to the presence of hydrogen ion. So which one is hydrogen? Hydrogen has only one proton. So answer is A. Which one is used to define the relative atomic mass of elements? Can okay, see? Relative atomic mass is compared to carbon 12, which means carbon with the neutron numbers of 12. So which uh which one with 12 neutron number? So you see 6 plus 6, you get 12, and we know that B is also carbon. Alright, so answer is B. So explain why B and C they are isotopes. Okay, remember they are isotopes because they have the same numbers of proton but different numbers of neutron. Alright, so because same number of proton but different numbers of Neutron. That's it. Okay, let's proceed to the next. So you see, look at this. We are giving you all these elements. So which one of these is green in color? Okay, we know that it is 
chlorine gas. Give another element okay, which has diatomic molecules. Okay, and it is a gas at room temperature and pressure. So diatomic, example, halogen group 7. So other than chlorine, which one it is also a gas at room temperature? It is fluorine gas. Then, when separate samples of each of these gases are placed in a container, they will diffuse. So describe why these gases diffuse. So why gas molecule they can undergo diffusion? Okay, this is because they have constant random movement or motion. And then of these four gases, which one has the highest rate of diffusion? Alright, okay, for your information, there are two factors that will affect the rate of diffusion. Okay, first one, temperature, and second one, relative molecular mass. See, based on this, we know that it has nothing to do with temperature. So therefore, the factors affecting this is relative molecular mass. So if you compare the mass, which one has the smallest relative molecular mass? So it's quite obvious it is hydrogen gas. You see, H2, hydrogen 1, H2, total 2. So also hydrogen gas. Because it has the lightest relative molecular mass. Okay, then next one. Okay, what is the percentage of nitrogen in the air? It is about 78%. Identify another element. See, the word element means substance that cannot be broken anymore. Like example, normal gas. So you can also give examples of normal gas like example argon or helium. Identify a compound. So compound means two or more elements that join together chemically. Like example, they are water molecule or carbon dioxide. How nitrogen and oxygen can get separated okay, from liquid air? Okay, it is through this process, what we call fractional distillation, right, based on different boiling points. And let's proceed to question 3. So you see, this is about ammonia so you are given with this chemical equation. So what is this industrial process? See, it is the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia gas. And this reaction is what we call Cable process. And the meanings of this symbol is what we call reversible. Okay, next, state the condition used in this industrial process include unit, so temperature 450 degrees Celsius, pressure 200 atm. The catalyst used it is iron. Okay, next one I see. If the pressure increases, the use of ammonia increases. So explain in terms of equilibrium. So how pressure affects the position. Okay, remember this, increase in pressure, it will always favor the side with lesser mole. So what you need to do now is, okay, you have to identify okay, the numbers of moles on both left hand side and right hand side. See left hand side, 1 plus 3 you get 4. Right hand side, total 2. See we know that increase in pressure favors the side with lesser mole. See left hand side 4, right hand side 2. 2 is smaller than 4, and right hand side it has a smaller mole. So therefore it favors a subway. So therefore it favors a subway lower mole, which is on right hand side. So position move towards the right. So this is the reason why okay, the use of ammonia increases. So answer in terms of equilibrium. So first mention care. Okay, this is because the position of equilibrium. Shift to the right. Why? Okay, this is because there is fewer moles on the 
right that's it okay next when the temperature increases the rate of reaction increases so explain why in terms of particles you see when temperature increases what will happen okay first the kinetic energy of particles increases so therefore particles move faster rate of collision increases and therefore particles that have sufficient energy to react so you see these are all the points that you have to include okay whenever they are i mean whenever they ask you okay how temperature affects the rate of reaction okay next see ammonia reacts with sulfur acid to produce okay a compound which is used to uh, make a fertilizer so write the chemical equation for the reaction between ammonia and sulfur acid so you see look here we know that ammonia is an example of alkaline Okay, and we know that acid reacts with alkaline to produce salt and water. Okay, but please remember about this. Okay, ammonia it is a, a bit special. Ammonia reacts with acid, it will produce only ammonium salt. That's it. Okay, there is no H2O. Okay, ammonium salt is the uh, is the only product. Right, see, example, ammonia reacts with sulfur acid. Okay, to produce, so you see, how do you deduce the chemical formulas of ammonium sulfate? See, ammonium ions and H4 positive sulfate as O4 2 negative. Cross method and H4, the two breakdown means they are 2 and H4. As O4, one breakdown remains the same. Uh, so this is how you look for the chemical formulas of ammonium sulfate. Balance the equation to right. Okay, next. Hey, give me with this preparations of zinc chloride crystal. So write the equation for the reaction in step one. Include state symbol. So it is the reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid so zinc in the form of solid reacts with acid remember all acid they are in the forms of aqueous eq to form zinc chloride salt solution and hydrogen gas all right okay remember metal reacts with acid to produce salt and hydrogen gas so why excess zinc powder is added in step one? This is to ensure all acid is fully reacted. And then how unreacted zinc powder can be removed? Okay, so to, re uh, to remove solid from the liquid, we can carry out filtration. Okay, next, okay, what is the meaning of saturated solution? Okay, saturated solution means solution that cannot dissolve any more solute at that given temperature. Okay, for your information, the marks allocated for this it is always a two marks question. In order to get full marks, so first cannot dissolve any more solid one mark at that given temperature one mark. Okay, this is because okay, temperature will affect the solubility. So this is the reason why okay, you have to mention K okay, at the given temperature. Okay, so next one. Why crystal forms as the solution cools in step 4? Okay, or why crystal okay, starts to form when the solution undergoes evaporation? Why? This is because the solubility 
decreases as the temperature decreases. All right, okay, next. Name two zinc compound which reacts with acid to produce zinc chloride. So they are, uh, like example, zinc oxide, zinc hydroxide, or zinc carbonate. Can okay, these are the only three possible answers? That's it. Okay, and last one. If excess calcium metal is used instead of excess zinc powder in step one, pure calcium chloride crystal do not form. Why? Okay, this is because okay, of the formation. Okay, there will be formation of calcium hydroxide. Okay, remember this. Group one and group two metals, okay, they will uh, they will react with H two O, okay. See in this case, you see this is dilute hydrochloric acid. That's water molecule inside. So the calcium metal will react with the water molecule to produce metal hydroxide. So which also means, okay, the uh, the solution produced, okay, it might not be hundred percent calcium chloride. So this is the reason why, okay, uh, a pure calcium chloride compound. Uh, cannot be obtained. Okay, so next one. Okay, so you are given with the reaction between sodium hydroxide and acid. Sodium hydroxide is an example of alkaline. Reaction between alkaline and acid. This is an example of neutralization. Okay, then first one. Calculate the numbers of moles of sulfuric acid. So first, what are the information that is provided about sulfuric acid? So sulfuric acid you are given with the volume 25 cm cube and the concentration 0.1 mole per dm cube. So you see you are given with concentration and volume. So therefore the formula to be used is N equals CV. Concentration 0.1. Volume, can you remember this? Volume, okay, the V, it is always in dm cube. Okay, so how do you convert cm cube to dm cube? By dividing 1000. So 25 divided by 1000, you get 0 0.025. So eventually you get 0 0.0025 mole. Next, what is the numbers of moles of sodium hydroxide? Okay, with acid. Uh, that, I mean that reacts with acid. So what is the mole? So basically, okay, you have to compare the ratio. Alright, so you see ratios of NaOH2 acid it is 2 to 1. Okay, previously we found that the moles of acid it is 0 0.0025 mole. Compare ratio 2 to 1, okay, you multiply with 2, you get 0 0.005 mole. Okay, 0 0.005. Okay, next, concentrations of sodium hydroxide. Formula N equals to CV. Numbers of moles 0 0.005. Concentration, no idea. So what is the volume given? See, in the question itself, it's given here. Volumes of sodium hydroxide is 20 cm cube. Same thing, convert into dm cube, divide by a thousand, you get 0.02 mole, uh, 0 0.02 dm cube. So concentration eventually will get 0 0.25 mole per dm cube, 0 0.25. Okay, next, you see, you are asked to look for the concentration in grams per dm cube. So to convert concentration from, from mole per dm cube, to grams per dm cube, it can be done by multiplying the molar mass. Right, so 0 0.25 multiplied with the molar mass. Sodium hydroxide, see based on periodic table, okay, the mass for sodium Na is 23. Oxygen, 16. Hydrogen, 1. So eventually, you will get 10. So 
10 grams per dm cube. Alright, okay. then let's proceed. Okay, organic chemistry questions. So give the lattice of the organic compound P to you. Okay, there are unsaturated hydrocarbons. You see, unsaturated hydrocarbon means compounds that contains carbon to carbon double bond. So we know it has to be alkene. So answer R and U. And because they are alkene. Then how can you test okay, for an unsaturated hydrocarbon? Okay, let me see. We can always test with bromine water or bromine liquid. Observation, remember see the color changes is always from orange to colorless. Remember, okay, for bromine water, okay, the color will always put orange in color. We do not put brown. Why? Because iodine liquid is also brown in color. So basically, this is to differentiate between bromine water and iodine water. Alright, okay, remember this. Okay, bromine water is always orange in color. Next, see, build one in it is an unbranched molecule. So name the unbranched isomorphism. Unbranched means that it's not side chain. Okay, there is no side chain. So isomers of alkene it is based on the position of the double bond. So you see, build one in, it looks something like this. The double bond is located okay, huh, on the first and second. So isomer, you can just move the double bond okay, to the side. So eventually, okay, huh, so this is the isomer. It is also what I call build to in. Okay, next you are asked to draw the structures of a branch isomer. Branch means there is a side chain. So how do you draw this? So okay, it looks something like this: three, and then there's a branch carbon. Okay, coming out from the side. Yeah. Hmm. So this is how it looks like. Okay, next. See, what is the formulas of this don't decay with 12 carbon? Okay, we know that for alkane, the general formula is Cn H2 N plus 2. So N equals to 12, you get C12 H26. Okay, next, give the letters of all the organic compound P to U that can be formed when it is cracked, which means it undergoes cracking. Remember, okay, alkane undergoes cracking to produce alkane and alkene. So you see, uh, which of the following here, okay, they are alkane and alkene? P, R, U. So these are all the possible products. Okay, so and so, P, R, you okay next one so name the reagent and suggest the condition needed to convert organic compound u into s see based on the diagrams okay, we know that u it is an example of alkene as it is alcohol so from alkene to alcohol it is what we call hydration so what is the reagent needed for hydration Remember, okay, it has to be steam. If you write water, okay, no marks be given. Okay, please remember about this. It has to be steam. Okay, condition needed for hydration, temperature, 300 degrees Celsius, pressure, 60 atm, and catalyst, phosphoric acid as the catalyst. That's it. Okay, next. Organic compound S, which is alcohol, to Q, which is carboxylic acid. I see from alcohol to carboxylic acid. So name the types of chemical change. Okay, remember, okay, it is oxidation. And what is the acidified reagent needed? Or what is the oxidizing agent? Okay, it's what we call acidify potassium manganate 
seven solution. All right, okay, so this is the most popular oxidizing agent. Okay, let's go into G. See, organic compound T is made by reacting two compounds together. See, based on T, we know that it is ester. So what is the homologous series? It is under the ester family. Okay, then name the two compounds that react together to produce uh, organic compound T. See, if you look at T, we know it is metal butanoid. Okay, see, remember, see, if you look at the word formula, okay, the first part it is always from the alcohol part. The second part is from the acid. So you see, metal butanoid. So we know that it is from, from see, the first part, alcohol, methanol. Acid part, butanoic. Acid. So structures. So how do you draw methanol? You see, methanol there's only one carbon. C O H butanoic acid total four carbon. So C O O H three more carbon. So this is how it looks like. And then what is the molecular formulas of organic compound T? Alright, so first, how uh, how the metal butanoid looks like? Okay, so you see it looks something like this. What? C O O. Remember the hydrocarbon is attached after the O. It belongs to alcohol. Alcohol there's only one uh, carbon methanol. So one carbon. And then acid, they are total four carbon. So one, two, three, four. And the rest they are hydrogen. You see, you are, see, here they are asking for molecular formula, it's not chemical formula. If you write C three H seven C O O C H three, no marks will be given. Okay, they are asking for molecular formula. So you see there are total how many carbon here? One, two, three, four. Total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, isn't it? Okay, so C, 5, H, 10, O, 2. That's it. Okay, alright. Okay, next one. So polymers, they are large molecules built from small molecules. So state the name given to the small molecule. Okay, all the small molecules, they are called monomers see given with this polymer yeah huh, draw the monomers of this so first what you have to do is you pull back the double bond see into these two carbon all right so pull back the double bond double bond see hydrogen hydrogen see the rest isn't it you cannot just write ch3 why because it's mentioned here Show all the atoms and all the bonds. So which means you have to open up everything. Again, so you can actually move the carbon over here. CH3. So C H3. So same goes to another one. Okay, you can just draw it to the side. C H3. So this is how it looks like. So what types of polymerization is this? See it, it see it happens in alkene. By breaking the double bond. This is what we call addition polymerization. Okay, next one, you see, we are giving you all this amino acid. Name the types of natural polymer form when amino acids are combined. So amino acid that join together to form protein. Okay, how do you draw this? Remember, you see, they undergoes condensation polymerization. Condensation, polymerization, okay, it happens by removing a byproduct, so called H2O. So, which means we have to take away the H and OH. Alright, okay, remember this always take away the OH from the COOH side, and then you take away one H from another side. So, take away one H, take away OH. H, OH to form H2O byproduct. And then the rest basically just join them together. Yeah, so you see there are two H what? 
take away one H, left only one hydrogen. Okay, then CO and H. CO and H. CO as 10. So this is how it looks like. Okay, so there is one more thing to take notes. Okay, always make sure that okay, when you draw the polymer, you have to make sure that okay, both the end, okay, you always finish with all this extender bond. Okay, to show that it is still connecting with some other monomers. Okay, this is super important. So this is how the drawing looks like. Okay, then next one. So, what is the chemical reaction that takes place okay, when the natural polymers is, convert, uh, is converted back into amino acid? It is what we call hydrolysis. Okay, huh? so basically, these are the answer for this particular paper. So, if there's any question, you guys can always ask or comment okay, below. And I hope that this video is helpful for you guys. Thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.